Hello everybody, this is Strange Gamer back to kick off round two of Group F matches. And in these matchups we will see Melon taking on champ the Champions team, Chainsaw taking on Dinosaur Queen, and Brenton versus Blood Moon. Ooh, that could, that could be an important game, because no one will want to be cut adrift this early on. And we'll get on with the first matchup. Alrighty then, and up first for Melon in the red corner we have a Soro Faganax. Uh, well, we saw how mightily impressive it was in the previous match. Although I will say Melon, despite coming really close to that two bonus point win, I felt like it definitely the RNG was with Melon. <laughs> anyway, in the blue corner for the champions team, we have Mapusaurus. Ugh, I should really increase my uh, FPS to 60. Yes, this beast that won the fire tournament without dying once. Banana ding bing bing. Okie dokie, right, let's get on with this. Both of these two enjoyed fine wins in the opening round, but only one of them will continue that winning streak while the other will suck. Well, lose, I should say. Ooh, it's a tie! And well, surprise, no heat eruption from either of them because their technique's quite low. Ooh, but the Soro Faganax getting off another hit there. Ooh, the Mapusaurus striking back, and that sound just then meant that the Reform type activated, which means this will do more damage than it usually would, as you can see there. Um, quite even so far, the Soro Faganax has the slight edge, but the Mapusaurus coming back strong. Oh, is that tie? Yes, it is. Ooh, no heat eruption though from either of our combatants. I mean, not that surprised, but a little bit surprised. Ooh, but the Mapusaurus gets off a stun dash, which will take out Soro Faganax. Yeah, I should do. Just bam the buttons. Boosh. So I feel a bit nutty because I just I just recorded Primal Carnage. I always feel a bit nutty after I record them. That. Anyway, net as for Melon's second dinosaur, we have the Decentraurus. Actually, I don't need this book yet. Um, not much to say here. Could Sand Trap come in handy? Could Earth Barrier come in handy? Could Crystal Crusher come in handy? Just have to see. Okay, that's Rock. Ooh, that's Rock. No Sand Trap, no Heat Eruption. Ooh, the Mapusaurus getting off a hit. The Champions lead. The Champions team have just opened up a lead. But the Crystal Crusher has been triggered, so the only way Mapusaurus will survive is if it gets off a hit. Which it does! Desantararus not looking good so far, and there goes the chance for Crystal Crusher. Ooh, that's a tie. And it's Heat Eruption, not Sand Trap! The technique boost paying off for Mapusaurus as Heat Eruption activates instead of Sand Trap. And this will also put the Mapusaurus 2-0 up. Really strong from the Champions team. Although Mapusaurus does have like sliver of health, so it will die eventually. Anyway, as for Melon's third dino, we have the Gojirasaurus. <coughs> and I feel like if Mapusaurus gets a hit on this thing, well... Melon is in big trouble. Well, they're already in big trouble, but they'll be in even more big trouble. They'll be up a creek with their mouths wide open. Okay, the Matusaurus finally died, the Gojirasaurus finishing it off, but Melon still has that work to do to catch up to the champions team. Anyway, as for the Champions Team's second dino, we have the Spinosaurus. This beast won the Water Washout Tournament recently. And I suspect that it'll have a, it has a good chance of finishing off Gojirasaurus. 
And bear in mind that the Champions team is the only bot team that has actually won a match so far. Is it about to win another? Is it going to do what Team Yokarkaria did last time and win every match? <laughs> well, it is at this rate. Pew! The Gojurasaurus hit again. Ooh, a neck crusher from the Spinosaurus. Look, things looking good for the Champions team. They could get a bonus point win here against Melon. Well, it looks very likely that they will. Yep. Wow. A very dominant display by the Champions team. And Melon's third dino goes down in defeat. And that's a bonus point win for the Champions team. Wow, could they do what Team Eokakiria did last time? They probably could. Because they are the champions. Right, let's take the table. We'll move on to our next match. Alrighty then, our second match sees Chainsaw going up against Dinosaur Queen 777. And at first for Chainsaw, we have a Sorrow Pelter. Uh, that roll attack could be lethal there. Could pack a punch. Does Should pack a punch. ACT Rocket, I feel like, is the Joker move of the set. And, well, Earth Barrier is what Earth Barrier is. Anyway, as for Dinosaur Queen in the blue corner, we have Tajongasaurus. Watch out for that Rock Roller there. And will the Revival type effect come in handy? Uh, both of these combatants enjoyed multiple... Opposite fortunes in the first round of matches, with Chainsaw winning their opening game and Dinosaur Queen losing. Uh, could be an important match, this could. Can Dinosaur Queen score their first win of the tournament? And Wow, that was a lot of damage in a tie. Although Soro Pelter took a bit too. But from the looks of it, I think a tie will suit Soro Pelter more, because it does more damage and takes less. But Tajongasaurus is revival type, so it will... If it dies in a tie, it gets to come back once. Ooh, it's a tie. Ooh, the Sorrow Pout, they're getting off a hit. Not too much damage done, though, but it is quite an even start so far. Oh, ooh, they've done it again. I'm sorry, <laughs> I opened OBS instead. Oopsie. Ooh, and could this ACT rocket change all that? When will it come down? Ooh, not this round. Interesting. Very interesting. There's a tie. And down comes the rocket. And Tajongosaurus goes down. Oh, wow. The, the revival effect actually worked. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, because it was actually a tie. So maybe maybe it counts the uh, ACT rocket as damage from a tie. Anyway, another rocket will be launched into space by Chainsaw. As the Tajongosaurus survives by the skin of its teeth. Um, I suspect this rocket will come down straight away, though. So Tajongosaurus will die. Oh, it doesn't. But that rocket is coming down. So this Tajongosaurus... Well, it's pretty much certain it'll die. It's, it's a certain death. But the Tajongosaurus does get a cheeky hit off. Wow, wait, wait. wait the rocket ain't down yet? Could Soro Pelter go down? Okay, it's a tie. The Soro Pelter, the Tajongosaurus, does die in the tie. I don't know if ACT Rocket will carry over to Queen's next dinosaur. That dinosaur being the Rugops. Beware of Rugops' crit. That hurricane beat could do a serious amount of damage. I mean, look at that. It's almost maxed. And we saw what Quake Saber did with Lexovasaurus. Oh, hang on. I've done something. There. Yeah, it was kind of overlapping the, uh, the Google and uh, Demo. Um, also, this Rugops is tie defense type, so could that come in handy? Oh, come on, don't do this, RNG, please. Oh, push. Okay, so Skizzers. And, and the next one will be Skizzers. So, oh, so it'll be a tie. And that will be curtains for Soro Pelter. 
Uh, it doesn't look like the ACT rocket carries over, so <laughs> Chainsaw basically wasted their attack. Anyway, as for Chainsaw's second dino, we have the Alberta Ceratops. People seem to like using this for some reason. Uh, Lightning Spear could do a lot of damage, since Alberta Ceratops seems to have quite high crit damage com in comparison to its other two moves. Will we see it in action, or will we not? Will Alpha, will ACT Rocket ever come down? Ooh, it's a good start from the Alberta Ceratops here, laying a hit on Rugops. Okay, I think it's safe to say that ACT Rocket has been deactivated. Ooh, the Rugops getting off a hit. Not too much damage dealt, though. All the power is in that crit. Well, he goes for the crit, but he ain't getting it. Oh, that's another tie. There's the tie defense effect there from Rugops. Making sure it takes no damage. Ooh, a light recovery coming from the Crowl of Asaurus. And Chainsaw still has the upper hand in this match. But one hurricane beat from Rugops could change all that. Another tie. But again, that tie defense effect there. Ooh. Instead of Hurricane Beat activating, a lightning spear coming from Alberta Ceratops. And that will give Chainsaw a 2 1 lead going into Queen's third and final dino. That dino being the Crowl of Asaurus. Um, again, not much to say here since it has all secret moves, so I'm just going to skip. But Dinosaur Queen 777 has some work to do, as this Alberta Ceratops is looking strong. Ooh, it's not letting up. Things looking not so good for Queen. Dinosaur Queen, that is. Oh, come on, give the cryo a hit, game. No secret moves? Ugh. Oh my goodness, it's Alberta Ceratops is rinsing it! <laughs> well, I think I think Chainsaw's gonna win. Ooh, a frozen glide getting triggered there. Could that be what Dinosaur Queen needs? Or could a crit be what Dinosaur Queen needs to make her come back? Nope, because Counter Blitz is activated, which means Basically, Chainsaw's going to win this round, unless it's a tie. Nope, it's not a tie. It's a lightning spear to finish off Crowlophosaurus and give Chainsaw a bonus point win over Dinosaur Queen 777. Um, well, the Alberta Ceratops, it was pretty even, actually, going into both of their second dinos, but the Alberta Ceratops managed to pull away for Chainsaw. Uh, yeah, good match. Uh, Dinosaur Queen not looking very hot so far. With two opening defeats, it could be tough to get out of Group F. Right, time to update the table, and we'll move on to our next matchup. Alrighty then, an important clash this could be, with, with Brenton going up against Blood Moon. In the red corner for Brenton, we have the Abelosaurus, and... I'm going to have to get my thing reflexes ready because he's using Crimson Flame. Definitely an attack-minded moveset. As are all of his dinosaurs. Anyway, in the blue corner for Ch for Blood Moon, we have Chomp. I, I keep saying Chainsaw for some reason. I don't know why. Gabu. Will we actually get to see Chomp this time? Because... Soro Fagnax made quick work of it in the third, in its first light matchup. Well, Soro Fagnax made light work of Chomp and um, Blood Moon's second dino. <laughs> but will Blood Moon's fortunes be better this time? I hope, I hope, I hope so. Just so we have an interesting match. Oh, for God's sake! Well, your luck then improved Blood Moon because it's a crit right off the bat from our Abelosaurus. I mean, I suppose I could mess this up, so. You know, it's not it's not guaranteed to do lots of damage yet. But it's going to do some. 
Oh, no. <laughs> and there we go. Instead of clicking paper, scissors, I click paper. But a decent amount of damage dealt. Oh, that's that be a tie. All right, let's try this again, shall we? A crimson flame from the Abelosaurus, and this time, hopefully, I'll get it right. And if I do get it right, it'll be curtains for Chomp. Yeah, I got it spot on that time, which means Chomp is going to die. <laughs> my, so my mess up didn't really change anything. And just like in the first match, Chomp is dispatched quite easily. Anyway, in the blue corner for Blood Moon Second Diner, we have the Baryonyx. Now this thing should be able to put up a fight against Abelosaurus, but it put up no fight against Sorofaganax in the first matchup, so I have very little hopes for it. But, what I will say about this Barry is that his scissors move does do more damage than his crept. Of course, that's only when Futaba Cannon is activated. Oh my god, Blood Moon got a hit! Let's just hear that in chat. He's got a hit, he's got a hit. Blood Moon, he's got a hit. <laughs> Although, in fairness, Blood Moon did get quite a few hits off on Melon. They just all happened to be when he had his Pachycephalosaurus out. Ooh, a crit from the Barry. And with the type advantage, the Abelosaurus not looking so hot now, is it? And that tie will certainly finish off Abelosaurus. So Chainsaw, so not... <laughs> Blood Moon looking a lot better than he did in the first match against Mela. Anyway, up next for up next for Brenton, we have a Super Mutterborosaurus. And yes, a very attack-minded Super Mutterborosaurus. But what I will say is all of its attacks are very balanced. Just like Baryonyx. And just like Baryonyx, Mutterborosaurus' strongest move is not its crit. Of course, as, as I said with Futaba Cannon, that only applies if 2 Platoon Crush or Super Impact activate respectively. Okay, the Awaken Mode is on three. Okay, that's once. I will get this right this time. Ooh, the Baryonyx getting off a stomping hammer. Yeah, this seems a lot more even than Blood Moon's first matchup where Melon completely dominated. Wow, look at that damage. I, I'm vaguely impressed. Um, I think that's because this Barry is counter type, so does more damage after it gets hit. Ooh! Not only has Blood Moon come from behind to take out Abelosaurus, but the Baryonyx is gonna say uh, is gonna say adios to Mutaborosaurus. And and now Brenton is playing catch up instead with his third Dino, the Omega Armored Eocarcaria. And unlike most Eocarcarias in this tournament, there's no heat eruption or burning dash. But you got you you always gotta have flare sword. It's a crime against humanity to not. But this Eocarcaria will have its work cut out to defeat the Barry because the Barry it does have the type advantage. Ooh, a good hit though from Eocarcaria. But the Barry strikes back with a stomping hammer. And I think this Barry is counter type as well, so it will do a decent amount of damage here. Which is not good for Brenton. Oh my god, another stomping hammer! Is Blood Moon on course for a bonus point win? An Eocock area, not looking good so far. And yes, there's a bonus point win completely out of nowhere. Wow, I am quite taken by that. Consecutive attacks from the Baryonyx gives Blood Moon a, I'd probably say, a well-deserved bonus point win. 
despite the strong start from Brenton, Blood Moon comes back to win 2-1. Well, 2-0 actually. Alrighty then, I'll update the table and we'll end the session. Alright, now that is how Group F looks and that looks very interesting. We got the Champions team and Chainsaw up top with 7 points. Blood Moon on 5 points with that bonus point win. Melon still on 3 points. And Brenton and Dinosaur Queen bringing up the rear with 1 point each. Uh, yeah, it's still a very tight group. I mean, wins for either of these two next round will bring them into the top 4. Uh, let's have a look who's playing next. So 4 versus 5. Ooh, we'll have a clash at the top between the Champions team and Chainsaw. So yes, Group D looking vet. F, sorry, looking very interesting. And this could be a big match between Melon and Brenton. And then we'll have Dinosaur Queen going up against Blood Moon. So still a lot to play for here in Group F. And especially with these two playing. I feel like the winner of this match will pretty much assure their place in the last 32. Uh, yeah, 10 points. They'll put them... They'll put them after... As it stands, I will put them nine points clear of Brenton in fifth. And with two, yeah, that would, act, yeah, that would, actually, that would guarantee them a place in the knockout stage. And, a, well, a bonus point win would do it. Although, if Brenton wins, for, like, I'm not counting, like, the two bonus point wins, because, quite frankly, I don't think it's going to happen. So the max Brenton could get out of three games. After three for three games is 12. So if they lose to Melon. So yeah, if these two fail to, to fail to win their next matches. And the winner of this match will be guaranteed a place in the last 32. Right, that's <laughs> got it out eventually. So I hope you enjoyed this session. And this is Stranger Gamer signing out.